This is the demo video for your oil pastel and watercolor practice sheets um, that are in your Unit 1 Assignments and Assessments folders. We're going to go through this really quick and we're going to do the um, pastel guided practice super, super fast. Um, so the heavy pressure blending, I like to use two light colors um, or two primary colors or just try to use mainly primary colors for this. Don't mix a whole bunch. It's really just for you to see the transition. So I didn't draw boxes because it would be a little too small. Let me scoop this closer. So I'm just going to uh, do it on my paper, but you would copy those squares, label them, and put that in your sketchbook. I'm not looking for you to copy the little um, summary of how to do each box. Um, and that's there as a resource for you guys, but in case there's any confusion, I wanted to do a quick demo. So hard pressure is simply um, going one direction, pressing very hard, and then you can layer another color, pressing really hard. And you can keep layering if you want, but for time, I'll do one more. But as you can see, it'll get really waxy and really thick. Uh, it'll be a nice blended color. Light pressure blending would be the same thing. Really, really light. colors you can just mix them you'll notice the more and more you mix them and layer them it will get a little waxy and darker so um, just keep that in mind and uh, just make sure those are two pretty easy ones just press hard when you're doing heavy pressure and then uh, do a more of a light uh, pressure when you're doing the light pressure one so and then next what do we have color mixing so I like to use blue and red uh, for this demo because it makes a nice color the color mixing would be right here Nice blue, and then all I'm looking for is this, and then I would maybe layer it again. But do we see how that makes like a nice purple color? I don't know if you guys can see that, but essentially you would mix two primaries together. I think is what I suggested is to, to do this with two primaries. Mix them together, and you get a nice purple color. Make sure um, that you don't draw like, super big boxes. Uh, but I kind of want you guys to fill up those boxes that you do draw. So you can draw smaller boxes. I'm okay with that. Um, as long as you can fit it all in the square. Next would be stippling. So stippling is when you're coloring with dots. So you would do that. And then you would make a layer. And then you can keep going. And you would be able to build nice value with, with stippling. You can also stipple. If you want to do like little dots, if you want to be a little more precise, that's fine. But uh, for time and speed, I uh, did the little dot that way. Uh, next is scumbling. I'll make it different colors. All right, so scumbling would be little, little zigzags. And then you're building up from there. So you're building those values. All right, that would be scumbling. Next is graffito. I like, uh, I, I suggest to do this with, with heavy pressure. So you're doing that nice thick layer, maybe even layer it a few times. Get it nice and thick, nice good area to work with. Uh, and then you're gonna go in and scratch it off. I'm gonna use this screw I have right here. You can use whatever you have. Some people uh, in class yesterday were, were taking the lead, uh, pushing it into their lead pencil, and then using that just to scratch it away. And you would be able to do uh, pattern, design, cross hat, whatever you want to do. You would be able to, to scratch it away, and that would be the design. So let me, in case you guys can't see that, it's right here. That's graffito. All right, what's next? And then lastly is the oil. So you would do kind of a nice wash here. Let's do blue color. And then let me grab my other supplies. Take a Q-tip. I put a little bit of baby oil in the cap, and then you would just apply it. See how that rubs really nice, nice, smooth, all the way through. And then obviously you would um, have to let this dry. It's all weird. 
So that would be it. All right. So right down here, I'm going to do the watercolor example. Yep, it's dirty. Let me pull that one up so I can see what order these squares are in. There we are. Okay. Watercolor practice. So flat wash. Flat wash is just one solid wash all the way across. So we'll pick this weird purple color. And you would want to a little white. Excuse me. I have this little palette. This is what we have here in class. If you have a different type of watercolor, that's totally fine. I will take whatever you have. Flat wash would just be a nice, even coat. Fill up the box. One solid color. All right. That would be a nice flat wash. Next, what do I say? Dry brush. So you would dip it in the color. It's a little wet, right? Maybe dry it off a hair. Or maybe just don't use a lot of water when you're doing this. Like barely wet the little palette. And then you would go in and kind of dab it off. And then this would be a dry brush. So your brush is dry, right? You can see when I'm pre pressing, it's kind of doing this weird, nice. It can be really pretty uh, for the dry brush. What do we have next? Wet on wet. So wet on wet would be go in and you would wet the surface first. All right. And then you would use your wet uh, watercolor and you would go in and apply that. See, uh, if you guys can see, hopefully, oh, let me pull this closer. Flat wash. You go side to side to side. My brush is just a little small for that. Uh, dry brush, just make sure it's dry when you're going and doing it. Uh, don't use, um, so if you want to do that one like first, while your brush is still pretty dry, or just dry it off. And then next would be the wet on wet. You wet the paper first, and then you apply the watercolor on there. And then wet on dry would be similar to the, the flat wash. So usually you would do the flat wash with a bigger one, and it would just be kind of one nice flat but we'll do wet on dry we'll do two colors for this one all right so the paper is dry you're applying your watercolor let me get some more water um, there we go and you would just maybe mix those two so your paper is dry when you're doing it okay flat wash remember one solid color Wet on dry, I want you guys to use two different and kind of practice blending those together. Make sure that paper is dry, and then the wet on wet, your paper would be wet first before you apply that color. And then you'll see if your paper uh, is really wet, then first, as soon as you touch your, your brush to it, it'll kind of like take on, and I'll show you really quick, maybe if you can see. So my paper is super, super wet, right? Sorry, my brush is dirty. But... There we go, super, super wet. I'm taking my really wet paint, and then as soon as I do it, it's gonna kind of spider out a little bit. If you guys can see that, it's gonna spider out. Hopefully, sorry. All right, moving on. What do we have? Lifting. So lifting, essentially, you can do this with a cotton ball if you have them. I don't have any here in class. Um, get this nice and dry. So lifting. You're doing a nice thick coat. I'm going to do it right over this one. Nice thick coat for lifting. And then you would go in and you can use paper towel if you want. Lift it right off. You could go in with um, a dry cotton swab. Lift it right off. Uh, whatever it, it may be. Whatever you need to do with that one, okay? Uh, if you have a cotton swab, those are awesome. But like I said, I don't have any here. What do we have next? Oh, I skipped alcohol. All right, so rubbing alcohol, this is a really awesome thing. More water. So let me do a nice big square here for you to see. This is where you would take a Q-tip. If you're doing a really big area, you can use something else. Um, let's 
for this demo. I did open it ahead of the All right. You just get it wet, nice and wet, get a little alcohol on it. And then as soon as you do it, I'm going to get the camera close for you. As soon as you do it, you'll see. Make this really nice effect. All right. Hopefully we can see that. What's next? Um, salt. So I don't have any salt in the classroom today. But essentially, you would just put on, put it on uh, with the watercolor, and then you would sprinkle the salt. Or if you have really big salt crystals, you can specifically place them in certain areas to uh, to get it a really cool effect. Once it's dry, you just scrape them off, and it would. Be, it's kind of hard to describe, so if you have salt, just kind of experiment with that and do that. I'm sorry. That's the one thing I did forget today. All right. And then what is the left? Crayons. So essentially, um, what you would do is you would take a crayon. They're way over there, so I'm not going to go grab one. Uh, yes, yes, I am. Give me one second. All right, I lied. I do not have any crayons, but color pencil will do the same thing. My apologies again. I wasn't going to do the demonstration for you guys, but we did have a few questions yesterday, so I figured in class, I figured this might help you. So you would just apply. I want it to do just nice stripes. You're going with your crayon, do a nice thick layer, use hard pressure. Then you would go in and put something over it, nice thick coat, and let me pull that closer for you, all right, and as you can see I just did really light uh, strips with that colored pencil, but it's just resisting the water, so the water isn't sitting where it is, okay? Hopefully you guys can see that. Once again, you're going to do this in your sketchbook. Just draw little squares. They do not have to be super big, um, especially for those oil pastels, because I know they kind of can get used up uh, pretty quickly. So just do smaller squares. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, take notes if you need. Uh, but other than that, please do this today, which is, uh, what day is it? Thursday? Do this by Thursday. Honestly, by the end of the week, just get this done. Um, essentially for the main project for your portrait, I'm going to let you guys choose whether you use watercolor or oil pastel or maybe both. So once you have your nice portrait drawn, your uh, continuous line contour, line drawing, all, all done on your big piece of paper, all right, you're going to go in and you're going to choose either or, or you can mix them and fill it in and make it look super interesting, super awesome. If you have any questions kind of what it should look like, Go and check out the PowerPoint that I posted already in your resources folder that give you some examples of kind of what the outcome should look like. And once again, don't stress if it doesn't really look like a person. Um, I'm just looking to see that you did the assignment correctly. All right. If there's any questions, please let me know.